service the seals, start by removing the 10 hex socket head screws from the discharge manifold using an 8mm hex wrench. Next, use a rubber mallet to tap the discharge manifold to separate it from the inlet manifold. Remove the discharge manifold and place it on a flat surface. To remove the inlet manifold, use an 8mm hex wrench to remove the four hex socket head screws from the inlet manifold. Tap on the bottom backside of the inlet manifold with a rubber mallet to create some separation between it and the crankcase. To assist in removing the inlet manifold, rotate the crankshaft to create further separation. Use two flat tip screwdrivers to pry the inlet manifold away from the crankcase. While supporting the manifold from the sides, remove the inlet manifold from the plungers. Place the inlet manifold on a flat surface with the high pressure seal spacers facing up. Next, remove the high pressure seal spacers from the inlet manifold. Insert a pair of flat tip screwdrivers into the center groove of the spacers opposite each other, then pry up and away from the inlet manifold. Once loose, remove by hand. Inspect the O-rings on both ends of the high pressure seal spacers for cuts, nicks, or damage. When removing the high pressure seals, use caution not to damage high pressure sealing surfaces. Place the tip of a flat tip screwdriver under the high pressure seal, then pry upwards to remove. Inspect the high pressure seals for any signs of excessive wear, grooving, or damage. Remove the three inlet manifold O-rings with a pick. Inspect the O-rings for cuts, nicks, or damage. To remove the low pressure seals, turn the inlet manifold over. When removing the low pressure seals, use caution not to damage the low pressure sealing surfaces. Place the tip of a flat tip screwdriver under the low pressure seal, then pry upwards to remove. Inspect the low pressure seals for any signs of excessive wear, grooving, or damage. Next, remove the seal retainers. Rotate the crankshaft by hand so the outside plunger extends the furthest out. Use a 10 mm wrench to loosen and remove the ceramic plunger. Remove the plunger retainer and gasket. Inspect the gasket for cuts, nicks, or damage. Inspect the ceramic plunger surface for cracks or abrasions. Replace as needed. Remove the large barrier slinger and inspect it for damage. To reassemble, start by installing the barrier slingers over the plunger rods. It does not matter which way they are installed. Install the new plunger retainer gasket onto the plunger retainer. One end of the ceramic plunger has four notches, and the other is smooth. The notched end goes toward the crankcase. Install the plunger retainer and gasket into the smooth end of the ceramic plunger. Apply liquid thread sealant to the threaded hole on the end of the plunger rod. Place the plunger onto the plunger rod and hand thread the plunger retainer into the end of the plunger rod. Use a 10 mm wrench to tighten the plunger retainer and torque it to proper specifications. Install the seal retainer with the holes at the top and bottom then slide it over the plunger and into place. Place the inlet manifold with high pressure seal surfaces facing upwards. Inspect the high pressure sealing surfaces where the high pressure seals seat for damage. Also inspect the sealing surfaces where the inlet manifold o-ring seal. Turn the inlet manifold over and inspect the surfaces where the low pressure seals will be installed. Lubricate the outside diameter of the low pressure seals and position the seal with the spring facing down into the inlet manifold. Press into place. Apply silicone sealant. 
part number 701931, to the flat surface of the inlet manifold to provide a seal between the inlet manifold and the crankcase. To reinstall the inlet manifold, rotate the crankshaft until the two outside plungers are an even distance from the crankcase. Use these two outside plungers as guides when installing the inlet manifold. Install the inlet manifold by carefully sliding over the ceramic plungers. Use a rubber mallet to ensure the manifold is flush with the crankcase surface. Hand thread in the four inlet manifold hex socket head bolts. Use an 8mm hex wrench to tighten and torque to proper specifications. Position the pump vertically so it rests on the rear crankcase cover. Remove the O-rings from the high-pressure seal spacers with a pick. Inspect the grooves and inside diameter for damage. Then, use this spacer to seat the high-pressure seals. Install the high-pressure seals over the ceramic plungers with the metal backing facing down and the groove side facing out. Place the high pressure seal spacer without O-rings on top of the high pressure seal. Use a rubber mallet to gently tap high pressure seals into place. Reinstall the O-rings onto the high pressure seal spacers. One side of the high pressure seal adapters has a groove. This groove side must be installed facing the high pressure seal. Lubricate both O-rings. Install the high pressure seal spacers with the groove side down towards the high pressure seal. Use a socket the same diameter as the high pressure seal spacer and tap it with a rubber hammer to seat it completely. Install the three inlet manifold O-rings into the grooves. Before reinstalling the discharge manifold, inspect both the sealing surfaces of the high pressure seal spacer bores and inlet valve seat areas for damage. Carefully slide the discharge manifold over the ceramic plungers and press towards the inlet manifold. Use a rubber mallet to tap the face of the discharge manifold until the manifolds are flush against each other. Hand thread in the 10 hex head screws into the manifold. Use an 8mm hex wrench to tighten and torque them to proper specifications.